Yeah, on the top right hand corner there. Look like Mike Tyson. You know? Look at that picture. Now, that last picture mm -hmm. on the right hand side uh -huh. kind of looks like you a little bit. <laughs> but you see that picture. Remember the old make picture I gave you all uh, Wednesday. Remember the picture that I gave you all. Remember the picture showed the back of these helmets where Africans had braids and corn rolls. See? So show they had corn rolls. Now the reason why I'm bringing that up to you to show you how white people, and I'll turn back to the previous page, the previous page, where it says European book burning and vandalism in Mexico. Now, this is show you, remember what I said about black people giving no credit. Now look at this. Dr. Michael Cole, a Harvard educator and chairman of the Department of Anthropology at Yale. Now you were educated at Harvard, and, but you taught at Yale University. He is recognized as America's leading historian on Mexico. Now check this out. He says that the old Mac heads have broad noses and thick lips because the tools used to cut them were so blunt to make sharper noses and thinner lips. Cole says this was done because the sculptors did not want to create protruding or thin facial features that might break off. So these are white people who made these African statues, but you made Thick lips on purpose because you know over time, you know, they, and you made them like the people really looked, mm -hmm. it would probably break off over time. Yeah, right. So you made the noses thick, made the lips thick. So I guess that's why you gave them corn rolls too. Yeah. See, yeah. See, that's why you gave them corn rolls because I guess the hair it's, might fall out. It's right. Yeah. It's see, well, remember what I said? Now the history. But I said, I'm going to let you see something to show you how. Well, to get black people no credit. See, you didn't do anything. See? Now, he said he made the noses and the lips thick like that, even though these helmets, you know, document what dynasty they came from, Nubia, Egypt, the 25th dynasty. However, there is still, they still in denial that black people did not do this. These were white soldiers who came to this country who had these big broad lips and broad noses and these African helmets on their head simply because they knew over time their nose and lips might break off. So we wanted to let you know who they are so that we just left them thick like that, the nose and the lips, you know. I told you how white people are. Sure. Look at here, the Jalapa the Jalapa Museum of Anthropology in Jalapa, Mexico. Upon entering the museum, one can see overhead a declaration carved in stone, which attests to the significant contributions of the African Olmec people. It reads, and this is what it says, and this is actually what it says, attention Mexican. This is the root of your history, its cradle and its altar. Listen to the most silent voices of the most ancient culture in Mexico, the mother of the civilization of our continent. The old Mex converted rain into harvest, the sun into a calendar, stone into sculpture, cotton into cloth, pilgrimage into commerce, mountains into thrones, jaguars into religion, and men into gods. Think about that. I told you we were always a spiritual people. I didn't say religious people. 
I said spiritual people. Sure. See, spirituality has nothing to do with religion. See, it's only during the time with the European where he want to connect the two together. He want to take spirituality and put it with religion. The only difference, the difference between spirituality and uh, religion is that spirituality allows you to understand your place in the universe. That who you are and what you are. That nothing on this planet exists in and of itself. Everything is dependent upon something else for its existence. That's spirituality. And you understand that. That has nothing to do with religion. See? But the Europeans take religion and put spirituality with it. Now, the one they're one and the same, spirituality and religion. The spirituality has nothing to do with religion. Can I ask, yes. ask one question? Have you ever been around a lot of Mexicans? A few of them. Yeah. yeah. Now, from my experience being around Mexicans, right, uh, they tend not to like African Americans very much at all. Now, Africans, some of them they like, especially if they speak Spanish. Yeah. More open to them, but they're not very open to African Americans at all. You know, mm -hmm. there's people I know who've been to Mexico, and they see these little chocolate cupcakes and they call them the Gritos and all that, none mm -hmm. of it type of thing, yeah. right? So, why do you think if all this is going on, mm -hmm. how come the Mexicans don't know about black people fully? In because the a lot of them may have never been to these places. Just okay. like you might have Africans who live in other parts of Africa who live in, you know, live in the north, uh -huh. who live in the north of Egypt have never seen the pyramids. See, uh -huh. Just because you live in a particular place, that don't mean you have seen the monuments uh -huh. or the sculptures of the people who built them in the first place. I see. see? So the educators yeah. in yeah. Mexico yeah. Uh -huh. don't know nothing about yeah. the all makes A lot of them don't. Okay. Some of them do, but a lot of them don't. Okay. You know, so okay. that's what it is. Interesting. Now, uh, Look at this here, called an unnamed disease. An unnamed disease. Many healthcare practitioners believe that overcoming denial is the first step towards healing a confused mind. There must exist within the world a yet unnamed psychological disorder which impairs vision and allows people to actually believe that African-looking images and civilizations are not what they appear to be. This unnamed disease has already reached epidemic proportions among whites, white researchers especially. For example, the pyramids in Egypt were built between 2700 and 2200 BCE. BCE means before the Common Era or before the Christian Era. European Khazars, we're talking about the so-called Jews now, European Khazars claim that their slave labor built the pyramids. How can this be possible? And there are no historical documents supporting such a claim. Secondly, if the Khazars, these so-called Ashkenazi Khazars, who call themselves Jews, if the Khazars built the pyramids in Egypt, why didn't they build any in Europe or any other part of the world after allegedly leaving Africa? You know, they never built any. And after 